Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I thought I'd switch things up a bit since I always talk about sapphic books and talk about some Achillean books. So Achillean is essentially the mask form of sapphic, so referring to men or non-binary people with some kind of connection to manhood who are attracted to men and non-binary people with a connection to manhood and this is again, it's just more inclusive than saying MM books or MLM and in the kind of same way that sapphic is more inclusive and easier to say than just FF or WLW. So yes, that's what those terms mean. So yes, I'm going to be recommending you some Achillean books that I love and some that I'm going to be picking up hopefully sometime soon and I just thought it'd be a fun wee change for my channel compared to the usual. So first up, I've got to get it out of the way with, okay? And that is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McKiston. So this one is one that probably everyone knows about already and it's one that I just love so I couldn't leave it out. So this is a romance novel and we follow Alex who is the first son of the United States of America in this kind of alternate reality where a Democrat woman became president in 2016 rather than Trump. And he has this bit of a rivalry going with the prince of the UK, Henry, and a kind of PR disaster leads the two of them to having to have this fake friendship for the press to improve their image and this spawns into something real. And I adore this book, it's very very well loved and I can definitely definitely see why. I love Casey McKiston's humour and characters and relationships and just like the authenticity to these. It just really gets me and it's something I adore reading so much and their humour as well is just top tier. I have, There are very few books I think I said before and very few authors whose kind of rom-coms can actually make me laugh. You know where I really get the calm element, the comedy part and Casey McKiston is definitely one of them and I adore Red, White and Royal Blue so much. And actually it's been a while since I've read it. I might do a reread at some point because like I'm kind of forgetting the plot and I hate that. You know with your favourite book and you know it's your favourite but if someone asked you to like name your favourite scene or you know actually explain the plot in detail you'd have no clue because that's what I'm finding out when I think about this book. And I don't like that so I'm gonna have to reread it. But yes, I wanted to just do this one quickly, just get it out of the way with, because I know so many people will know it and love it already. And that you're kind of not really here for a recommendations video of books you already know and love. Next up is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. So this is a novel told in verse. It's the first verse novel I had read. Actually, the only one I've read so far. I've got another one in my TBR this month. But it is just absolutely beautiful. I really, really enjoyed reading this. So this follows Michael and we really get from his kind of childhood to his first year of university, this kind of reflection on his life and growing up in being gay and being slightly more feminine and then getting into drag uh, towards the end of the novel. And it's really just absolutely gorgeous and deals so much with his identity as being mixed race and being a black boy and what this all means especially as this intersects with his sexuality and it's just so absolutely gorgeous. I read this in one sitting and like my fingers were stained from the ink because I just couldn't put it down. It was just such an experience to read and I truly truly loved reading this one. And I just wanted to include this book in this video because verse novels are just very, very cool. And this one doesn't get nearly as much love as it should. Although I would say it's one of the more popular novels in verse I've seen. I just, I love it. It's so, so just gorgeous and touching and I really love it. <laughs> it's this imagery and like the pages, you've got different images different like typesets and like black pages and that and it just really like conveys all of this emotion and it's just gorgeous honestly I really really recommend it. <laughs> Next up I want to talk about Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. So this is another adult romance and it's another one I really really loved and this follows Luke who is a bit of a disaster, just walking disaster honestly and Due to his famous parents, he ends up in a kind of PR disaster as well and he really has to fix his image because he stands to lose his job at the charity he works for because donors don't want to donate to this 
charity that had this really messy, extremely gay man right at like front and center. So he enlists the help of Oliver, this barrister who's very like straight and narrow, you know, put together, has his life together to fake date to kind of improve his image. And we follow their fake relationship and these complete opposites, just having to learn to get along and obviously because it's a romance novel some real feelings develop and I just really loved seeing this progression of their relationship. I felt like they were just so well suited for each other, they had such good chemistry and I really just flew through this as well, I really really enjoyed reading it. And I really like the insight and development we got of Luke's character as he was dealing with some trauma from previous relationships and how this have impacted his current relationship and how they moved and worked through this and I just thought that was very very well done and it really rang true to me as well as something very very honest and I just really liked their relationship and their dynamics and it's just another one that I really really enjoy. A good fun time honestly that's what you get with this book as well as some really really touching personal moments and I definitely recommend it. Next up I want to talk about a recent favourite of mine and that is The Passing Playbook by Isaac Fitzsimons and this one I'm just so completely in love with. I truly just adored reading it. This is a YA romance and we follow a trans main character who has joined a new school following some transphobic bullying. And at his new school he's going stealth, he's not making it clear anywhere that he is trans, he's just passing for a cis boy. And everything seems to be going great, you know, he's joined the soccer team, he's got this romance brewing with one of his teammates and he's getting on well with all of the others. And this all kind of comes crashing down around him as a transphobic law forces his coach to bench him after discovering the F on his birth certificate. And we really follow our main character Spencer having to make this choice between coming out and going public with his gender identity to fight for his right to play soccer which is like his favourite thing in the world, we've got a right soccer gay here, or just maintaining his safety and going stealth and not compromising his relationship or anything like that but existing on the sidelines of his own life and this book and the kind of synopsis makes it seem like it's much more like activism focused and fighting for this right to play and it is but it's much low lower key than a lot of other books and it doesn't really come into play until like the second half of the book and we really just focus on Spencer's relationship with Justice, his love interest and just building up their relationship and their relationship with their teammates and the kind of difficulties they face in their relationship and it's never because Spencer is trans. That never comes into it as a problem and I really really appreciated that. I just really loved their relationship and how they had their own things to work through but it was so overall positive and supportive and just good and sweet and I just really really loved reading all of their scenes together. It's just this perfect like teen joyful romance and just full of trans joy, everything you could want. I really really cannot recommend this one enough, it's so good. <laughs> Next up we have got Camp by Elsie Rosen. So this is one I read last year so I might be a bit iffy on the actual synopsis but we'll give it a go. <laughs> so this follows Randy who has been going to this like queer summer camp for teenagers for a few years now and he has the biggest crush on another boy that goes called Hunter? Hudson, sorry, Hudson. However, this is complicated because Hudson is only really interested in mask guys and Randy is not. <laughs> he's rather effeminate or you know flamboyant, he has his nails painted, long hair, he's into musical theatre but he's just determined to be with Hudson when we meet him, he has just spent this year away from camp masking himself up, if that makes sense, you know, getting to sports, getting buff, cutting his hair. So he shows up at the camp as someone completely different as Del and we follow his romance with Hudson and just navigating some toxic masculinity in the gay community and all of that and it's done so well and I just loved it. And I'd worried before I picked this one up that it might be cringy and embarrassing with Randy pretending to be someone different and it actually really wasn't and 
it's definitely like called out that this is weird behavior and he shouldn't have to change himself for a boy but we, his friends are also so supportive and let him make these mistakes which is something I enjoyed and I just it's so good so much like queer history and positivity and love it's like a warm hug honestly and really sex positive as well that's something I'll say for both of Elsie Rosen's books we've got Jack of Hearts up here also recommend they're very sex positive which I just love seeing in young adult books I think it's very very important especially in queer books and not just for education but just to normalize it and I love it so yes very sweet relationship tackling some big themes and like really sensitively as well this toxic masculinity and breaking it down and oh it's it's just very well done I absolutely flew through this one as well you'll notice a theme if I love a book I fly through it and yes definitely recommend this one too next up we have got the magic fish by Tuong Lin Nguyen and I loved this graphic novel so much it's just so like mystical and whimsical and oh, absolutely stunning as well oh, love it and so we follow a young boy called Tien and he is the child of Vietnamese immigrants living in America in the 80s and he is gay and he is searching for a way to tell his parents this because he can't figure out the word for gay in Vietnamese and his parents don't speak English very well but what does connect him and his parents through the kind of language barrier that they've got is stories and every night he will sit down with his parents and they will tell a story and through this book we follow these stories and they have really interesting implications and everything and there's just so much like thought put into them and it's so incredible there's a note at the back that explains it all and I'm just in awe but we follow him just trying to find a way to explain this to his parents and it's just so soft and just such a quiet small story but so 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 touching and I absolutely adored reading it these are all like fairy tale stories that they tell and they come from different eras and some are Vietnamese some are not and we really just get this whole like, blend of cultures and this idea that stories connect us all regardless of language or culture or place and time all of that and it's, it is just absolutely stunning and we deal also a lot with his parents story and how they came to America and some of the troubles that they faced in Vietnam and it's just it it's so stunning I cannot emphasize it enough the art in this is just an another level and oh, again as I said you need to read the author's note at the end the thought put into it all and it's just so cleverly crafted and put together and I am truly truly in awe of this author's talent I'd say this reads for also a younger audience if anyone's interested I'd say this is maybe more middle grade especially as our main character is a bit younger but it's definitely it's got this resounding impact no matter your age and it's one that I cannot recommend enough next up is another new favorite of mine and that is 1500 miles from the sun by Johnny Garcia so this just came out very very recently and I was lucky enough to read an arc and you need to pick it up I've not had a chance to yell about it yet so we're getting my first yell about it on here and guys it's so good so mm, I love it so this follows a main character called Julian and he is living in Texas and he is Mexican American and he is also gay and we follow him kind of reconciling these two parts of his identity and dealing with some of the machismo and the kind of homophobia and ideas of what being a man that come with this and reconciling that with him and his identity and we follow him as he gets very very drunk at a school party and accidentally comes out on twitter and this was not his plan because he knew about this machismo and this homophobia that exists in his community and so he was waiting until college and then he could do it himself and be out and proud and all of that but obviously it doesn't go to plan however you know it's not all doom and gloom his twitter crush slides into his dms and starts up a conversation and this begins this lovely lovely relationship between the two of them so this is matt he's living in la which is like where jules wants to go with everything in him and he 
is Vietnamese American and honestly just <laughs> I love him he's a bit of a ray of sunshine in Jules's life and also just like flirty and funny and caring and sensitive and just I, I love them I love all of their scenes together they're so sweet and yes yeah, so we follow their relationship we follow Jules and his friends and him dealing with this reconciling of his identity and how that goes down in his community and it's just such a lovely touching heartwarming story and ultimately extremely joyful and hopeful and just everything you could want and um, I will also say though be very very aware before you go in this deals with some heavy topics there's abuse there's homophobia there's racism there's a lot um there's an author's note at the beginning and it nearly made me tear up it's so sweet and gentle and sensitive and includes trigger warnings as well and and I, I knew from reading this note alone that this book was going to deal with some very heavy topics but with such sensitivity and care and to never sensationalize them and that remained true throughout it was just done so carefully so sensitively and I just, I adored reading this every single moment it's absolutely stunning even at these really hard scenes to read you never felt like it was a like it was dire and dire you never had to worry too much because you've got this absolutely gorgeous support system for Jules and all this other joy and <sighs> another thing I loved about this book is how very effectively the author managed to capture so many of these elements of being Chicano a lot of what is written in this book will be a mix of Spanish and English and this could be really really intimidating or sound intimidating to anyone who doesn't speak Spanish but it's just done so so cleverly so that the English reader will never ever have any difficulty with it and okay I do speak Spanish so like maybe I'm not the perfect person to say that but I don't speak any of the slang that they use because I've not spent any time in Mexico or picked up any Mexican slang and or Mexican American as well I should say and I completely understood all of that it's just so cleverly done and it really just puts you right in your setting and just makes this so unmistakably like a Chicane book and in love with that and also alongside that we have got the food and I don't I'm not usually overly fussed with like food descriptions in books but my god here I, this made me so hungry there are so many gorgeous sounding foods and I'm like oh no I want to eat that right now <laughs> oh I'm just I loved this book so much I loved every second of reading it I cannot recommend it enough for this like sweetest softest relationship and pining and angst and just this like humor as well to it like Matt is so suggestive and I love it it's, it's so good and honest and heartwarming and everything I really really love it really really recommend you pick it up it's like the perfect summer read you've got to next up is Running With Lines by Julian Winters and I also read this one a while ago so I'm very sorry if I'm a bit rusty but I adored this one it's just got this like warm and happy and bright and summery kind of like atmosphere to it and just, I love that and you know queer friend groups soccer teams all of that all these things that I love in a book and it's just so good so this follows a main character called Sebastian and he's on his high school soccer team about to go into his last year of school and they have this like soccer training camp over the summer that he's going to and you know everything seems to be going great but his like ex-childhood best friend Amir shows up and appears to absolutely hate him but he needs Amir the team needs Amir so this sets him off as trying to like work with Amir and rebuild this relationship and get Amir invested in the team and it's just mm, so good and like warm and fun and just the best atmosphere so supportive you've got a really like queer team and just everyone allowed to be queer so openly and diverse and everything it's just impeccable <laughs> and this bit of enemies to lovers childhood friends to enemies to lovers chef's kiss trope and it's just a lot a lot of fun and just it's just got so much like a heart to it and friendship guys I love reading friendships and 
something else I really appreciated was that our main character Sebastian suffers from some body image issues um, due to some childhood bullying and this was really explored in the book and I loved seeing a male character deal with these problems. I think that's so important and it's not something I can think of seeing in other books very much um, like with male characters but it's so important to include and I just really really appreciated that. Absolutely just friendship sports gays and team dynamics and summer fun and just sweetest romance as well and just mm, love it <laughs> so much love this book i need to read more by this author because they all sound incredible and the uh, cover and the synopsis for his new book just went up and my god it is so pretty it's this like pastel dream <gasps> and it's like geeky friends to lovers it sounds so so good oh i'm just in love. <laughs> Next up we have got Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. This is another one that I imagine a lot of people will have heard of and loved and as you should if you've not considered picking this one up yet I really really just like implore you to. It is so good. This is another like perfect summer read. It's like why you contemporary and we follow Felix and so we follow him taking part in this like summer art program and um, you know just like bolster your college applications for art school and this all seems to be going great you know he's with his best friend and his best friend I love their friendship however when someone posts pictures of Felix pre-transition alongside his dead name in like a massive gallery of the school where everyone's gonna see it he has to kind of deal with this and figure out who's done it and also just he's dealing with some questions of his own identity and you know maybe trans guy isn't completely right completely the right label for him and all of this you know he's like speaking to someone texting them and seeming to fall for them and he's also his best friend and their friend group and everything that they're up to and it's just so fun and artsy and new york and everything and i really really loved this one again blew through it it's so fun and good and there's just so many like good lines here as well about you know what he f deals with for being queer and black and trans and all of this and like is this one marginalization too many and it's so just you know like heart-wrenching and touching and just an overall incredible 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 book i so highly recommend this if you've not picked it up already you just need to it is absolutely stunning. Serves such good romance and friendship and self like discovery and uh, like not dis or discovery sort of but also just like being so comfortable in yourself and learning to be comfortable in yourself and so good. <laughs> Next up we have got Symmetry Boys by Aidan Thomas. So again another one I imagine you've heard of and hopefully read and loved as well as you should because it is incredible. But if you've not yet heard of it, this follows a main character called Yadriel, who is a brujo. So he's part of this like community of bruje, this like touch of magic in the everyday world. Um, living in LA, it's all Latini, of course. And so as part of his community, everyone does the ceremony on their 15th birthday. And so the men and the women of this community, the brujos and brujas, they have different roles. And so the type of ceremony they do differs. And Yadriel is trans and he wants to do the brujo ceremony as he should but he's not allowed because they don't think that whatever the laws of the ceremony are will respect that he is trans and actually a boy and that they will go by his kind of assigned sex at birth. But Yadriel does the ceremony anyway and ends up accidentally summoning the ghost of Hulian, the bad boy in his school. And so the two of them are stuck together as they try and figure out what happened to Hulian and Yadriel trying to help him get to peace so that he can prove that he's a real brujo and we get this like magical ghosty romance between the two it's so like angsty and good and mm, so fun and you've just got this like lovely like friendship dynamics between these two and Maritza Yadriel's cousin and it's just I love the community and the atmosphere of this book it's so gorgeous and just it I can say this in the best way possible that it reads like fan fiction at times like in terms of the romance and that's like the best feeling in a book is this you know like that's one of the highest compliments i can give because 
there's just some quality to a book that reads like fan fiction that gets me and I think it's just really character focused and that's what this is and it's done so well and this is just so like up uplifting to read and I adore it so much it is completely worth all of the hype that it has gotten and I just I cannot recommend it enough it is absolutely stunning I couldn't put it down I actually did a like a reading vlog for it and I kept being like I need to go do this work but I am reading and I want to keep reading so I just I ignored all of my responsibilities and read the book instead and like as you should because it is worth it it is so damn good <laughs> Next up is The Wicker King by Kay Ancrum. So this is a YA book. It's contemporary but with like fun fantastical elements that I'll kind of explain in a moment but ultimately contemporary. And um, we follow August and Jack who have been best friends for years and they have this like really intense codependent friendship. You know they're the complete opposites. August has got this kind of pyro streak of a bit of a bad boy and Jack is like the golden boy of the school. However, when Jack starts having these increasingly vivid hallucinations of this fantasy world layered over the top of their own, the two boys kind of have to trust each other and rely on each other and no one else to deal with this and try and save this fantasy world that Jack's seeing. And this book, it is intense to read. This friendship and everything that they're going through is so intense and it's just so like cleverly written as well. I really, really enjoyed it. And it deals very heavily with, you know, teenagers being left to their own devices, like parental neglect and just being let down by the system and done so sensitively. And I really, really enjoyed reading this. Their relationship between the two boys, which begins as this really intense friendship and develops into something more, was also just so good to read. And just oh, all the emotions between the two of them and... Oh, it's just so good it's also got this really interesting format you know like the pages get darker as you go and as things get worse and you've got like i'm not finding any of them but you've got like drawings at the beginnings of chapters and a lot of the chapters are like a couple pages long so it's just this really fun format to read as well and i just i love it so much it's so 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 good and the final book i want to recommend that i've read is ace of spades by frida bk Mede. so this is my most recent read and I'm in love. I am in awe. I am in shock. It is so, so good. So this is a YA thriller. It's pitched as Gossip Girl meets Get Out and I've not seen either of those so I don't know what that means but hopefully it means something to you. <laughs> but this takes place in this like elite private school and we follow two main characters, a boy and a girl. They are both black and they are both queer and we really just delve into institutionalised racism particularly within this a private elite school setting and the upper class and all of that and it's just so good I I could not put it down I did not want to I was getting really close to like the end and I had to leave for work I do not know how very sad I was I considered skipping work so so much but I was a good child I went to work and I finished it very late at night afterwards <laughs> But honestly, my only like response after finishing was just like, holy shit, because it was so good. And I don't want to say too much more about the plot or give anything away. But in terms of our characters, since this is a Killian, we'll focus on Devin. So Devin is our male main character and he is gay and he is from the rough side of town. He has gotten there completely on a scholarship, whereas Chiamaka, our female main character, is from a rich family. So they have both very different backgrounds. But Devin is outed as part of this bullying. I will just make that clear as a kind of trigger warning. And we really see some of the consequences that he deals with because of this and how very, very dangerous th this can be from him because of the environment that he lives in. And we follow him in kind of with two love interests and their relationships and it's just so well written and I really really felt for him throughout and just everything he's going through and oh it's just so good I just I really 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 enjoyed this book I, I just mm, read it <laughs> that's all I can say honestly it's just reading it is like 
you think that you've gotten to the worst point but then you look down and you're not far enough in for it to be the worst point and you just like this sense of dread of oh god what could happen next you know how can this get any worse and then it gets worse and it's just like peeling back these like layers of insidiousness and it's it's so like intense and you can't put it down but it's also like holy shit that's so not good and please just read it i definitely definitely recommend it it is absolutely incredible 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 so to finish off i just wanted to very quickly talk about a few more books that are on my tbr so the first of these is like a love story by abdi nathian so this takes place in new york in 1989 and we follow three teenagers and they're very much involved in this AIDS crisis and navigating it and what it means to be gay at this time and I am just so excited to read it. It looks incredible and I love the colour scheme. <laughs> it's an absolutely gorgeous cover, it's so vibrant but the story just seems very very touching and important and it's something I'm very interested in reading and I cannot wait to pick up sometime soon. Next up is The Witch King by H.E. Edgman. So this one just very recently came out and it sounds so good. It's pitched just like gay and trans, the cruel prince. So this follows a trans witch called Wyatt and he has to kind of face his past and this fiance he left behind, this royal fiance in this fey kingdom. And he has to choose between his own freedom and going back to this fiance and saving the kingdom and the throne and everything. And this kind of relationships between the witch and the fae as well and it just sounds so good and I am so excited to read it. I've already heard all the best things about it so I just cannot wait to pick it up myself. Next up is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. So this is non-fiction, this is a collection of autobiographical essays that deals with George M. Johnson's childhood, adolescence, just them existing as both queer and black and what this can mean and it's just like the joys but also the struggles and it sounds very very good. I know that a lot of people have loved it and I have been looking to read some more queer non-fiction so this is one that I'm definitely definitely wanting to pick up. And finally is Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. So this is pitched as like red white and royal blue in space and very much sold on that alone. So this is a space opera following two princes and then this kind of arranged political marriage who her pining and having feelings for each other and also trying to solve a murder and dealing with just space politics and all of this ramifications and it just sounds very good very fun i've seen lots of positive reviews and apparently it is more heavy on romance than space and politics which is right up my alley and i'm just very very excited to pick it up and yes that has been probably quite a lengthy video accidentally talking about some of my favourite Achillean books and some I cannot wait to pick up. I hope that you have enjoyed and you found a recommendation and a book that you yourself want to pick up as well. And yes, you can find links to all of these books down below and I'll have my reviews where I've got them, as well as my social media and my bookshop affiliate link if you fancy doing some shopping. I have actually got a page on bookshop, just a list full of Achillean books, so definitely check that out too. And yes, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in another video soon.